Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how electrons are transferred during ionic bonding. You should then be able to draw dot and cross diagrams to show ionic bonding. We saw in a previous video that electrons exist in energy levels or shells. I'm showing you here the electrons in an atom of argon, and argon is in group zero, which is also called the noble gases. Remember that the first energy level can hold a maximum of two electrons, and the second energy level can hold a maximum of eight electrons. The third energy level can also hold eight electrons before the fourth energy level starts filling. Now all of the noble gases in group zero have a full outer energy level. Scientists say that a full outer energy level is stable, and because of this, the group zero noble gases are unreactive. In this video, we're looking at ionic bonding. Let's start by looking at some key facts that you need to learn. Firstly, elements react in order to achieve a full outer energy level, and by doing this, they achieve the stable electronic structure of a noble gas, in other words, a full outer energy level. Looking at the periodic table, we can see that metals are on the left hand side, and non metals are found on the right. Lots of reactions in chemistry involve a metal reacting with a non metal. And when a metal and a non-metal react, ionic bonding takes place. Let's start by looking at ionic bonding between the group 1 metal lithium and the group 7 non-metal fluorine. I'm showing you here an atom of lithium. As you can see, a lithium atom has three electrons. There are two electrons in the first energy level, and then one electron in the outer energy level. And remember that electrons have a negative charge. Lithium atoms also have three positive protons in the nucleus. Now, because there are the same number of protons and electrons, the charges cancel. So an atom of lithium has no overall charge. Here's an atom of fluorine. A fluorine atom has nine electrons. There are two electrons in the first energy level, and then seven electrons in the outer energy level. Fluorine atoms also have nine positive protons in the nucleus. Again, because there are the same numbers of protons and electrons, the charges cancel. So an atom of fluorine has no overall charge. Now I'm using dots to show the electrons on the lithium atom, and crosses to show the electrons on the fluorine atom. But remember that all of the electrons are the same, whether they're shown by dots or by crosses. We can see that neither lithium nor fluorine has a full outer energy level. When we react lithium with fluorine, the lithium atom loses its outer electron, and this electron is gained by the fluorine atom like this. Now, both the lithium atom and the fluorine atom have full outer energy levels. Looking again at the lithium atom, we can see that it still contains three positive protons. However, now the lithium atom only has two negative electrons. This means that lithium now has an overall one positive charge. We now call this a lithium ion and an ion is an atom with an overall charge. The fluorine atom still contains nine positive protons. However, the fluorine atom now has 10 negative electrons. This means that fluorine now has an overall one negative charge. We now call this a fluoride ion. Both the lithium ion and the fluoride ion now have a full outer energy level. In other words, they both have the stable electronic structure of a noble gas. So remember that during ionic bonding, group 1 metals lose one electron, forming a one positive ion, and group 7 non-metals gain one electron, forming a one negative ion. Both ions now have a full outer energy level, in other words, the stable electronic structure of a group 0 noble gas. OK, now we often see exam questions on this topic, and I'm showing you a typical exam question here. This shows the reaction between the group 1 metal sodium and the group 7 non-metal chlorine. The question asks us to describe what's happening in this reaction for three marks. Now this dot and cross diagram only shows the outer energy levels, and that's because only the outer energy levels are involved in the reaction. So we would say that one electron passes from the sodium atom to the chlorine atom, and both atoms achieve a full outer energy level. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.